Hello, everyone, and welcome to the with Online Trader Central. We'll be starting in just two minutes. Mr. Armour is here with us today from the stockswitch.com, and we'll be starting promptly in just two minutes. Two minutes start time, everyone. Thank you and welcome. Hello, everyone, and welcome. And with that, it is exactly 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the Bronx area or wherever you may be around the world. It is time to begin. Please put your hands together and welcome from the stockswitch.com. Please welcome and welcome our host and presenter today. Thank you so much, Kevin, and welcome, everyone. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh LLC. And today I'm here to talk to you and give you a little bit of a lecture about trends. Uh, you know, trend trading is one of these things that a lot of people uh, don't think about that often because they're focusing so much on maybe a specific play they're doing or strategy. But the main, main reason that traders are successful, the ones that are successful in the market, is when they trade with the trend. And today we're going to talk about how to do that and how to figure out the trend in the first place. So if you'd like more information, you can go to my website, www.thestockswish.com, or email me at melissa at thestockswish.com as well. I am going to do a live market review after the webinar today if we have time uh, before we're done. And if not, then we'll just go into my live trading room. Uh, Kevin and Kathy can plop everyone over in there, and we'll go over some picks for tonight and the market as well. So, train the trend. First of all, ask yourself, do you, do you know how to read trends? I mean, do you have confidence in your own ability to read trends? Or are you not quite sure sometimes? Trading the trend is the only way to make consistent gains and money in the market. And yet many traders miss the importance of trading with the trend on a daily basis. Also, many traders misread and misinterpret the trend in a chart. In fact, reading the trend in a chart is a concept that is so important that it often gets overlooked. Again, like I was saying at the beginning, it often gets overlooked because people assume that they are reading the trend right, but there's more to it than that. Understanding the trend in the chart is vital to the success of a trade, and it's so much more than just looking at pivots or highs and lows. And this is what we're gonna review today as well, because I think a lot of people think higher highs and higher lows, lower lows and lower highs, means that something is in a certain trend, but it's not enough information. Again, the importance of the trend is that the trend is your friend. This is an old adage. Of course, I didn't make this up. This is something that traders have been saying for a long, long time. Trading with the trend is going to help you be successful, and it is your friend, and you want to learn how to trade with it. I clipped a, a picture here of the market, and this is the overall view of the QQQs. The Qs are in an uptrend and have been in an uptrend, but if you were looking at pivots, there were many, many pivots that were broken here, and I just clipped a brief period here back from the last two months of the market. But let's take this rally that happened back here from the beginning of September. 
market rallied up here, came in and did a pivot. Okay, now, this is a nice pivot. It's a higher low. Market did a higher high, went over the area. Came in, made another pivot, but it broke it. And then it didn't make a new high. Now, did that mean the market was all of a sudden then not in an uptrend or in a downtrend? No, the answer is no. The market was still in an uptrend. And even here, do you see this pulled all the way back in here and the market was still in an uptrend. And how do I know? Well, I was calling the market to break out to new highs. It did it. Here was a nice bullish gap the market made here. And then the market was basing out here and broke out to highs, which we're trading up and through now. So there were many pivots in here that were broken, but the market continued to stay in the nice trend that it's in and has this pretty much this entire year. I wanted to do a clip just here of the market overview for 2013 because the market started the calendar year, this is January 2nd right here, 2013, in a bullish gap. This is a view of the market for this year. I mean, talk about a trend. The market has been in a beautiful bullish uptrend. And there were many times in here at the beginning of the year, also through this dip in here, and then different periods in here where I would be doing videos on YouTube and talking to different people that they said, no, we're too, we're too extended, we're going to come in, we're going to come in, or we're trading down, or we're getting toppy. But the market continued. And why? Why did the market continue? And how was I able to read it so well? Because I'm good at reading trends, and we're going to talk about this today, and what has enabled me to read trends well is my analysis of gaps. This is actually how I determine what something is trending in, what direction, not the pivots. And you can see here how many pivots in the market here were all broken, but the market didn't come in. It continued higher than how in a bullish gap that happened here and continual bullish gaps that happened all the way up. So it's about getting the correct read. And I have been trading gaps, which is a strategy that I do and how I use the information I'm going to talk about today, but I've been trading them for five years. And I've realized more and more and more that the way to correctly read the trend of stock of the market is to identify and read price gaps. Because gaps are, their price gaps are happening. It's a gap. Reading gaps tells you what institutional money is doing in the chart now, and it gives an indication of what it will do in the future. The technical analysis reading of gaps gives you an edge to take positions with the trend. Gaps make the trend, they set the trend, and they can even change the trend in the stock chart. Trend trading accurately provides multiple purposes for traders. And you can swing trade or core trade or day trade gaps with a trend in a chart. And this is the great thing about gaps is, number one, you can use them to train, but also you're going to read the trend, and it's going to help you make decisions like if you want to get out of a position, not just get into a position, because there's so much more to trends than pivots. Look at all the lower lows and lower highs the market made this year, but carried through in the uptrend and kept breaking higher. And if you tried to short the market, like at this topping tail here, or up here when it was becoming topping and made the base, then, you know, you, you were you were losing, you were down money because the market was blowing on through these things. And I know the market had a deep pull in back here. This was in the summer, but it fixed itself really quickly. How? In gaps, in bullish gaps that continue. And remember that first chart I showed you where the market started out the year with a bullish gap. It was a sign. It was a sign. It was a sign of things to come. If you actually went long the first bullish gap of the year on January 2nd, you were in the market long all year. And look how much you would have gotten paid. So again, trading with the trend and reading it right. Reading what is there and what you wish was there are two different things. I wish I could say, gosh, you know, Every single thing is what it seems to be, but that's not the case. If it was that simple to just look at pivots to determine a directional read in something, well, then no one would ever make a mistake in reading trends. No one ever would because it's very easy to read pivots. It's very easy to read higher highs and higher lows and lower highs and lower lows. It's the easiest thing in the world. And yet, that doesn't tell us the right information that we need in order to read trends correctly. So we can wish and hope that something is in a certain way, but in the end, at the end of the story, we have to look at what is really actually there. It's the core belief systems that are behind these gaps that make them real, that are real in the price charts of the market and stocks specifically in companies when they gap. There's a core belief system that's going on when a price 
gaps, when the price does gap, and it's that people are upset, for example, if a stock gaps down, and then they kind of panic, and then a sell-off activity may happen, and people sell out of it. It's, it's about a core belief system. I believe this thing, then I should sell out of my long, or I believe this thing is going higher, so I'm going to buy it. It, trading is about understanding price and also core belief systems and charts setting up in the price because this is how people make decisions. And who are the people I'm talking about that make the decisions? Well, the people that are in control of the market, and it's power money. Power money in the market is the one that sets the trends and rules the moves of stocks and the market. Power money in the market is created by institutions who set the tone for a stock's trend. If you become a specialist in defining what institutions are buying or selling, then you'll have a huge advantage in your trading because power money sets the trend and makes the trend and changes the trend in charts and it can do it at will. At will. So you read, have to read things in real live time what's going on and there's nothing more live time than reading what? Price. If you're not trading on the side of institutions in the market, then you will have a hard time seeing lasting and consistent success in your trading. You have to learn how to read and trade on the side of institutional money. The hoping and wishing mentality which many traders have, it goes away once you gain an understanding of what is going on in the price for the side of power. And, and here's, this is over and above and beyond technical analysis. Understanding what goes through your mind when you trade, and I know because I trade myself, when some, you take a position in something, you know, we all want it to work, but how do we get past this idea of the hoping and the wishing and the fear type of mentality? We have to have something called conviction. We're going to talk about this a little bit later, but this idea of conviction uh, helps us take positions where we're risking money in a trade. Because there's never a time where we don't make money by risking money as traders. We must risk money if we're going to make money. And that's the whole philosophy of the market. So how do we do that? And do that not in fear. We have to have conviction. And that comes from an understanding. An understanding of what is going on with the price and an understanding of not only that, the core belief systems that are setting up and that are making these price adjustments in charts. So why is reading institutional money so important? Well, because we need it to be able to read this to make money correctly. It's the thing that sets the trend. And it's very important to read the flow and the institutional money in the market so you can make money from their moves. Trading is very easy when you get in the move at the right place and get out at the right place. Then it's, it's actually very simple, it's very easy. Uh, so you've gotta learn how to read it right. When you're trading with this power, you're like in the flow. You are following the trail of the money flow and you're just playing along with it as one person. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market in stocks. It also creates long lasting momentum and sets trends. When you're looking for institutional money, you are really reading the side of the power in a stock and you want to be in the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. And if you've ever taken a trade and it hasn't worked out and you've gone back and looked at what you did, you'll see it probably more clearly after the market's closed. Gosh, you know, I wasn't on the right side of this thing. I wasn't on the right side of the trend. I wasn't on the side of the power. The key is to be able to read that before you take the position in the first place. So institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. Institutional money sets the trend. And this is where we need to be with when we're making decisions to trade. So how can you read the side of institutions of the market? As I was saying earlier today, the method that I use is through gaps. It's in gaps. These gaps are just magical to me. I don't know how I would ever trade if I didn't know how to read gaps or understand gaps. I, it would be very, it would be very challenging to trade if you didn't know how to read gaps. Why? For the rare reason that I was saying earlier, this idea of pivots, it, they don't always work. And, and gaps are something that has so much consistency. Why? Because there's such a, a powerful thing that's happening in the price in a chart. It's like a secret ingredient Graphs are secret ingredient charts that many people overlook, and yet they hold a lot of significance. And if you don't know what a gap is, if you've never heard of it, we're, I'm going to show you here today because it's very interesting. Gaps make the trend, set the trend, and also continue the trend in stocks in the market. They set the trend because they are a definitive and demonstrative change and show of price in what is called an event. And gaps are a real show of the power of money. Gaps either continue the trend or, in fact, change the trend.
So if you follow the gap, you'll be following the power of money. And why do you want to do that? Because that's going to help you make money when you're in the flow of the momentum. So what is it that makes this move? It's money. That's the only thing that makes a stock move. It's money. People are putting money in. People are taking money out. That's what makes a stock move in the first place. Sometimes people are putting money in. They're buying. Sometimes people are taking money out. They are selling. So what is the thing that makes a trend? It's money too. The same thing, money. And it's money going in a certain direction. It's all, see how it all focuses around money. But you know what the interesting thing is? If we are too focused on money in our trade and not focused enough on what's going on in the chart in the price, we won't make as much money. We make more money when we're less focused on the money, and yet it's the very money, the very essence of the money that's in these stocks in the first place that's paying us. So there is only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock. It's money, and not a little money, but a lot of money, or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. It's in charge. It's like the king, the king that's in charge of everyone. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. And trends are set and moved by the power of money people. And you want to be friends with the king. You don't want to be against the king. So you want to be on this side, on the side of the power of money people. And there's a lot of them in the market. There's just a lot of them, a huge amount of them. So learn to trade with a trend and with institutions so you can be successful. And as one person, you can if you just understand how to read these things and play them right. So let's talk about gaps and what they are. And I'll show you some charts here. And if anyone has any questions, you can just plop them down here in the room. Here, I just typed a note. You can just ask me questions there as we go along. So this concept of gaps, what is it? It's a strategy in the market. It's a read of price, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But they happen all the time. I mean, every single day I get up, there's lots and lots of gaps. They happen on a regular basis. But the thing is that some are better than others. I mean, some are just nothing gaps. And some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction, or not only that, a bigger move in the same direction, which is very exciting. Because when you can see that something is going to have a big move, you want to get into it so you can get paid. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when the change is occurring. So comprehending gaps will help you decide whether to go long or short, whether to sell or buy. It's an overall comprehensive read of the price. This is actually how I've become very good at reading charts. Uh, a lot of people say to me, well, how did you know this thing was going to do that? Well, because I was reading the gaps, just like I was showing you about the market. So gaps really help you get out of this confusion. The confusion, I don't know what to do, which direction, I'm confused, I can't figure it out. Is this a square? Is this a circle? Is it a star? I don't know. I'm confused. Take away the confusion. Stop looking at these pivots, all right? They don't serve a purpose of reading trends. They serve a purpose when you're managing a trade, okay? But they don't serve a purpose for trend directional reading. Pivots serve another purpose, but it has nothing to do with how to take a position in a chart, okay? I want to look here at this Cisco, and, and I'm going to show you a gap. This is Cisco. This gap, I shorted Cisco, and guess what? It failed. It failed as a short. I'm putting this in the class today because I really want to do some quality teaching with people to have, help them understand what I'm talking about here. Cisco, this was back here in November, okay? I loved this gap on Cisco. I wanted to short it. I did short it. I Cisco was a short. Okay, now, as it turns out, Cisco did not go red this day. It did not lose value. From where it opened, it went down a tiny little bit, and then it flipped on through and rallied. Okay, so I took a loss in this. I got stopped out in Cisco. This was back in November. But my directional read on the chart in Cisco and the gap was correct. How do I know everything that's going on here and this is continuing to break? Now, how am I, what am I really looking at here? What is going on with this thing? Let's review it, okay? The stock closed up here. This is the night before in Cisco. This was the day of the earnings, by the way. The stock closed here at $24 approximately. The next day, I think the earnings were at night, yeah. The, the next day it opened down here around 21 something. 
What is this action? This is an actual bearish action. And whether Cisco rallies on the day or whether Cisco drops more in the day or whatever Cisco does here at all by, by four o'clock close this day, whatever it did, which we see what it did, but just pretend you didn't know. There's nothing that takes away from the fact that this is a bearish gap. It's a bearish action. Why? Because Cisco sold off $3 plus. And that's not bullish. It's bearish. So I'm reading the price here. So I'm figuring out what's going on in the trend of Cisco. Okay. Something's going on here. Something obviously is going on to make this stock go down that much overnight by between the pre-market, post-market hours and the pre-market in the morning before the market opens at 930, something happened here. Now, I just want to go back and look here at something else that happened in Cisco. There was another gap here that didn't work correctly right on Cisco. It was a short here. This worked better as a short than this guy. This is back in August. But it was jerky. It didn't have a nice fat red bar. But again, it was bearish. Look, closed up here at 26.25, opened down here at 24.50. And it held. It broke. It ran down. It came down in. Went almost to the swing trade target, which by the way was here, 23, which it did reach later, rallied up here, retested, retested what? Retested the high of the gap, the resistance of the gap, and guess what? Gapped again, dropped down, rallied again, dropped down, rallied again, and broke, and here's the gap that I was looking to play. Now, let's go over and look at, just pretend you don't see this candlestick. When I'm reading what's going on, when I get up in the morning, when I decide I want to watch a gap, when I want to read a trend, when I'm when I'm looking at something, okay, and I'm getting directional read, market, stocks, anything. This is what I am seeing. This is visually what me, Melissa Arma, this is what I see, and this is what I saw in the Cisco. So Cisco's up here at 24. It is getting sold off. This is happening. You see it happening. It's happening. There it goes. Then the stock opens. Now, on the day the stock opens, it doesn't go red. We'll go back to it in a minute. You see it's rallying up here. It's not red now. It's green on the day. It's a bust. That's a shame. I wanted to short it. But do you see this is actually then what was happening with the price? It was backing up a little bit here. Now, what happened then after that? Selling pressure came in and pushed it down onto the level of resistance back on top of it. And I hear where is where it flattened out. So when you read this, if pretend you don't know what a candlestick is at all, okay, just forget it. This is basic just price read 101. This is how you read price here. What's happening is the selling's coming in to push it down onto a level of resistance that's holding and is holding. That's what happened here. This was pushing down. It held. See, that's what happened here then. It pushed down on top of it. It's holding and this is going to break again. Okay. So, you know, it's it's really just about breaking a price down in a way that is so basic that anyone, anyone in the world of fifth grader could see this. And they'd say, yeah, obviously, I mean, this, this thing lost value. And yet many, many traders find this so confusing because of the pivot concept, the higher highs and the higher lows and all the stuff that's going on. But in the end, it's not going to show you consistent profits. What is this? This thing here that I'm just explaining right now, this is so basic. But this is really, I woke up in the middle of the night. I woke up in the middle of the night. It was after the Cisco gap. And I actually drew this little chart then the next day. And I talked about it in the trading room. Because I said, gosh, this is, this is exactly what I'm seeing. Like I saw the picture in the middle of the night. And I, and I got up and drew it. This is it. This is the concept here. And if we were looking to do bullish things, I'd have a different, a different chart here. I like to short. But this is how price works. And this is why things do sometimes the things that they do, like Cisco backed up. But it doesn't take away from the read, okay? And why is that so important to get the read right? So you know how to trade something. So you know that you kill a trade if, if you're in it and you see something's not right. Or you know to retake a second setup in something if it's setting up right. So you know what to do, the directional bias. Because that's important because that's how you're going to make money. Here's another one here. This is a really, really good one as well. This is Rax. And I just clipped this and plopped this in here for today. Why? Rax had a incredible move 
after this gap that happened here. And this wasn't even that big of one. Racks closed the night before up here at 49 something. I forget the reason for this gap. Things gap for many reasons, not just earnings. Had a humongous move. And this never looked back. Rolled off the planet and fell like crazy. From this gap, this is almost a $10 move. This is this is a beautiful swing trade, by the way, if you had taken the racks um, a hold. You could have held it overnight. Rallying up here, now, what are you thinking? Are you thinking this is going to retrace? Are you thinking this is done? Guess what? It gapped in again. Now, it went and ran today. This is today's activity in the racks. Dropped, fell on through, had a beautiful move, hit down on 34, bounced a little bit off of it, and now it's green. Now, are you going to buy this? Is this change anything that's going on in here? No. Yes, it closed green of the day. Yes, it bounced. Yes, it went over high of the day. Yes, it has a green body. Yes, this is extended to the downward direction, but you cannot buy the stock. It is a short. It is a short, and it's a beautiful short, by the way, because this thing has almost had a vertical drop, really, since this move back here on the 12th. So again, read, reading this is so important. So what do you do with this guy here? Nothing. You let it figure itself out. The short play is over. You don't buy it. Rax is in a downtrend, and you want to stay away from it now until it sets up again. So golden gaps are very useful. I term the type of gap that I trade, I, I call them golden gaps. Why? Because I feel like when I find a gap, uh, that is a really good gap. It's like finding gold. It's like finding gold in the market. It's something like that I is unexpected, something surprising, something exciting. And I feel like this is my opportunity. This is my opportunity to make money today in the market. And I feel appreciative and grateful and thankful that I even get these things in the first place, as many as I get. And the other thing is, I only day trade, but gaps can be used to swing horror day trade. Uh, I have friends I've taught how to do this, and they are taking the overnights in gaps. You do have to, uh, you know, have an account size to be able to withstand this because the margin on overnights is only two to one. But you can take these things overnight for a week or even for several months, and even racks. I mean, look at this racks here. You could have entered it the day of the gap, and look how it fell on through. So, I mean, there's just some really, really nice uses for gaps, not just for day trading, even though that's my favorite thing to do, but also for core or swing trading as well. Now, how do I pick the gaps that I like? Well, I qualify them. They have to be qualified by rating them using a checklist. Why? Because not every gap in the world that happens in a chart has is meaningful, okay? Some are and some aren't. And this checklist tells you what to look for in the price of a stock. And I use a checklist every morning when I trade. I'm very old-fashioned with what I do. You can see here the pictures I use to describe what I mean, what I'm teaching, and also that drawing I just made of Cisco. You know, I think it's really important to have paper and pencils and rulers and, you know, a list of things to do. This helps you be organized. It takes away from the anxiety when you're trading of the risk patterns and the wishy-washiness and the hoping and all this other crazy stuff that people do. Having a, an actual business outline of what you're doing, and not only that, following it, really, really helps you be a true professional. So this was a gap back here. This was a really nice one. And I did two plays in this. This was back in the early November. going to go over this now. Um, nice bearish gap that happened here. This is the one that I did. Follow through in this one, too. Look how it followed all the way through. It's still going down. You could be in this one as well as a carry through. Again, for a swing trade or a core trade, or you just day trade the chart right here. And this is the one we're going to go over. Sometimes when I do a trade, I get two setups. Sometimes I get one setup. Sometimes you get a bunch of setups. Sometimes something goes all day. Sometimes it's done in 15 minutes. You just never know. So you have targets that you look for, and you play the stock into the reversal times. In the case of OWW, it hit on so fast. This was at 931. I took the trade here, put the stop over the high that I actually got out so fast. I, I just got out because it had such a big move so quickly and went to the first area. And, and it actually well, got within a couple pennies of the first area. 760 was the first target. The entry time was 931, price was 796, stop was over 805, the risk was 9 cents. So this is an advanced risk, okay? This is not for beginners. I will go over a beginner example in a little bit. $540, exit is 765, total profit 1860. Risk to reward in this is 3.4. Now, the thing about trend trading is 
that when you are trading with the trend, you're looking for to get, number one, the right directional read, but also you want some momentum with something. So you are, you are looking for as your goal, your goal should be every day if you want a day trade to get at least a three risk unit payout in something. A three risk unit payout in something is a good profit. And you can stop for the day after that. Now, the, this is a nice profit, 1860, but what happened, and certainly in three minutes, by the way, it set up again. So I did a second trade in this. It set up very quickly too. It dropped down here, got out, rallied back to the resistance, held in here, and I shorted this again, and then got the second full on move. This did not go to the dream target of $7 in this move, but again, this is a nice, beautiful move. You're up a lot of money in this. The first play, the second play, into the 10 o'clock reversal time, you're out. So entry time for this was still very, very early. Quality time to get in trains, 9.38. Price was 7.89. Stop over 7.97 on 7,000 shares. Same risk here, 5.60. Exit is at 7.25. Uh, it broke on through every area. I'll go back and look at it too. Total profit, 44.80. And this is an 8R trade. An 8R trade in 22 minutes. This is all in one stop. So worst case scenario, you did the first trade. Okay, let's go back and look at this. You did the first trade, you made 1860. So then your plan of action is, well, I'm I'm not gonna, you know, get risk the whole 1860. I'm gonna risk one risk unit. Okay. So the worst case scenario, if this had failed, you would have made thirteen hundred dollars. Well, thirteen hundred dollars is thirteen hundred dollars. So as it turns out, it did work. And then you ended up making more. And this whole move that looks like next to nothing. And actually, if you look at the daily chart here, this, this is hard to believe. This is really hard to believe that you could have pull out in this little guy right here like over 11 hours. But that's exactly what I did because I did two trades. One trade out, boom, three plus R. Second trade out, boom, eight R's. This is 11 plus R move in here if you know how to get in right and how to get out right. And this looks like next to nothing. It's an $8 stop. Didn't even go to the dream target of $7 in the day. So again, it's about consistency, it's about accuracy, it's about getting the entries right, and not only that, it's about position sizing correctly. Because how do you make this kind of money? Well, well you take size. You take size and you gotta have the guts to do it. You can't get to the point where you're doing this until you know what to do, but if you do, it is so great to trade. I mean, to be able to make almost $2,000 in three minutes, <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, I, I, I never did that in my mortgage job. You know, for me to make $2,000 when I used to do mortgages, I, you know, I'd have to do a loan and take me three months. I'd be doing a loan for four months till I got paid. You know, it's this easy money once you know how to trade well. So the total for this, play one, 1860, play two, 4480, and then the total on OWW, 6340. And then the, the risk was initial risk was like 500 something. So really, this is a nice, nice, beautiful 11R plus move in one stock, in one gap. And why is it so powerful? Why does it work so well? Because of the quality of reading the price in the gap for the move. All right, let's look here at another one. Same type of concept like Cisco, except this one had the follow through on the day. Let's look at this gap first. The stock closed here the night before, around $50 and 50 some cents. The next morning it opened up down here, like 42.50 or something it was, 42.60 I think. Unlike the Cisco one that failed on the day, this had the sell off, okay? It had the sell off, it was almost $10, eight bucks down, sold off. And then instead of backing up on the day, like the Cisco did, remember? This actually had the pressure and then when the stock opened and the market opened at 9.30, the pressure continued and it was forceful pressure. This is a huge, huge, beautiful sign of weakness. And you can read it here. And you see that nobody cared. This thing had that huge pressure cooker and it just continued to fall off, continued to fall off the planet just really, really big. Very nice move. So here's the TFM. You saw the weakness immediately in the first bar of the day. This is at 9.30. This is a one minute chart. It backed up. And how did you know it was good? Well, first of all, I'm reading my gaps and rating my gaps, and it held the high of the day. Held the high of the day here. These are the moving averages. They're pressure. This is the pressure. This is the red arrows down, pushing, pushing, selling. More people are coming in. They're selling. That's what this is. What's what's happening here? That's what's making it go like this. That's what's really going on. 
So the entry time was 937. Price was 4226. We'll go back and look at it in a minute. Stock was over 4260. The risk was 34 cents. So on 1,500 shares, it was a $510 risk. Exits 4018. Total profit 3120. Risk to reward is 6.1 times the amount risk was made in profit. Another great trade. Again, you're you're looking for three R's. So if you can make six R's, that's a really nice trade. And this one too had a beautiful, beautiful move, specifically for this price point. So here's where you're looking to get in the trade, right in here where it sets up. After it comes back up here, holds the resistance, and you take the trade when it triggers. And then you write it on down. This actually had several different ads in here. You could have taken more. You could have taken more. You're lowering your stop every time you're doing it. Why are you doing this? You see the weakness in the chart. You see the target at hand. You see the stock going. You see it moving. You see it breaking. And it just falls off a cliff. Does anyone have any questions about, about these traits specifically or gaps? Ask me now. Or you can ask me later. I'm, I'm going to go over the beginner example because I like to do this just so you can see. You don't really have to risk an advanced risk as a trader if you are not in a place where you feel like you can take that type of risk. I always tell people you have to have confidence in yourself and your ability to be able to do this. And it's important to build on that first. Once you build your own confidence level and you know that you can do it and you're showing consistent profits, then you can up your risk. You have all the time in the world to risk more money after you know and can prove to yourself that you can do it. So this person here, he's a beginner trader. He risked 50 bucks, $51. Instead of taking 1,500 shares, he took 150. He had a good exit on it, same exact trade. There's nothing different. Same time, same price, same entry, same uh, stop. The only thing that was different was the share size. And then, of course, as a result, the monetary risk. Exit at 4018, total profit 312. It's a 6R trade. This is a beautiful, beautiful trade for someone that is only wanting to risk $50. He, he still made six times the amount that he risked. That's a quality trade. It's a real quality trade. So again, you don't have to be uh, risking a lot of money to be profitable as a trader. You have to do what you feel comfortable doing. And that's uh, you know up to everybody's personality. How much of a risk taker are you? What's the size of your account? I thought it would show this here, this TFM as a swing trade and what you could have made on this as a swing trade. You know, swing trades typically when people are doing them or are core trades, they're looking for, you know, two R's. Three R's is a dream swing trade, like meaning three times the risk amount that they would make. Typically when people are taking a swing trade, they're looking for two R's, like one to one or two to one. Why? Because the stops are a lot bigger. Stops are a lot bigger in swing trades. They're not tiny stops like day trades. So people have uh, less uh, ideas in their head about the profit potential. They're not necessarily trying to make, you know, six R's or four R's or eight R's in a trade. But as it turns out, gaps have such nice momentum and follow through with themselves that they can actually make the same type of quality risk to reward as a day trade. So let's look at this guy here. You get in the trade if you're going to do an overnight or swing trade the same place you would for the day trade. You're just going to not get out of the whole thing. So when this falls on down, before it bounces, you're going to not take the whole position off. You would hold it on through. And it's a paper stop because you don't have a, a real stop in because at 4 o'clock you can't have a stop in in your platform. So it is a paper stop then. And you're going to get it to the next target. Well, the first next target was 40 and almost gotten there. And then the next one was, of course, 39. And this stock got there. But the risk was different. It's 74 cents. So let's just say you had taken several thousand shares in the day trade, but you left 400 on the table, booked the money from the day trade, kept 400, 400 shares in the table to make a little bit extra, okay? And what did you make? You made an extra 1,300 bucks just holding 400 shares. This is a 4R trade right here. This is a very good trade because you only risked $296. And actually, if you did the day trade, you know, you were just risking part of the profit from the first trade. So let's go back and look at this here. In the advanced risk for this trader, if this trader had wanted to keep 400 on the table, they would have taken 1,100 out and profited from that, and they would have left 400 go. The risk would have been 296, but then they would have made more on the back half of it, 
letting it drop on down here for the swing trade. See this? So this advanced trader could have booked $1,100 here, or 1,100 shares here, and then let the rest ride on through the extra 400. Their original position, the risk was still the same, 1,500 shares, 500 bucks. See that? And you can have the follow through. Really, really nice. So again, this is another, another useful tool in trading is to swing trade. Once you know how to read trends right. If you know how to read trends, you can, you can take positions and hold them through. If you don't get the trend right, you can't take a position like this. If you think TFM is a long, you could never hold this overnight. You know, if, or if you don't know what's going on here, if you think this is in a bullish uptrend or a, or if you think this is going to fill the gap or something like that, the only way you can take overnight positions is if you really understand what's going on in the trend. And actually, if you do, you can hold stuff for bigger targets and longer term time frames, not just for two days, but for months and years even. And that's a great thing. So does anyone have any questions about these trades, about the day trades here or the swing trades here or or what I'm explaining here in these price action, these gaps. Does anyone have any questions? Let me know. So how am I figuring all this stuff out? I, I'm looking at the gaps and they're, they're just so useful. They have multiple purposes because if you're a person that really doesn't like to day trade, let's just say you can't sit at a desk um, and be focused when things are moving like that so quickly in the morning. You really just like to take the time to get in one position, uh, small size, and manage it over days or weeks or months. Say that's your thing. You can certainly do that, and you can do it as a swing trader at Core Trade. If you're someone that likes to make the money right away, like I do right away in the day, and I like to be flat every day by the end of the day, and you like to day trade and you like the faster action, which I do, then you day trade. You day trade them, you get out of them into the reversal times, you book the money, and off you go. So they have a lot of purposes. And you've got to find a way to find these, find gaps that make the trend, and change the trend and have these types of moves. So I teach a class. The class is December 14th and 15th, and it's called the Golden Gap Course. This is a class that teaches a solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and charts, which denotes the directional trend. The course teaches how to read support and resistance to take positions in the right direction. The course teaches a more proficient and advanced way to read charts, focusing on technical analysis and gaps, and that's really what I do. And as you can see by going over these examples today, I'm just reading the price, but it's more than the pivot analysis. The course teaches how to get conviction in your trading. And how, how do I do that? How am I able to do that personally? Because I am have conviction in what the price is telling me by getting the read, by rating it. Okay? So I go through a system where I have a checklist and I rate it. And you've got to have conviction in what you do in the market. And not only that, you have to believe that the market can be a source of wealth for you because if you think the market is something where you're going to lose or if it's gambling, you won't do well. You have to believe and have confidence in yourself and conviction that the market is something that is a source of wealth and that if you are able to train with the side of the trend, then you can make profits and not only profits, consistent profits. The Golden Gap course uses a 26-point checklist which tells you how to read the price direction to take the trend. So... My philosophy is that the better prepared you are, the better you're going to do, and the more money you make in the day, and also you're going to be able to take more size, which ultimately is going to be able to lead you to have large days. So success requires a plan for me. For me, and this is what I'm teaching people because I believe and, and feel very strongly that preparation is important in trading. Again, it takes away from these emotional things that come up on the day. So I use a 26-point checklist. This checklist tells me whether or not the gap is good and I want to trade it or not. And what am I looking to do? I'm looking to trade the gap in the direction of the gap. So I go through my checklist every morning. I just check everything off. Yes, no, yes, no. I go through the whole thing. If I get 20 yeses on the 26-point rating list, then I will watch the stock to trade that day. If in the, in the direction of the gap, so the trend of the gap, if I get less than 20, then I don't do it. Then I might not do anything at all. Okay, so it's really about qualifying it for me and my system, this is the system I'm teaching in the class, is about getting 20 points or more. 20 or more, that's what I gotta have. Checklists work, they keep you focused, they keep you organized, and they force you to look at what you need to be looking at. 
all right? Instead of just, you know, being totally, totally focused on the money and worried about things and the hoping and the wishing and listening to the television set and doing all kinds of things that you're not supposed to be doing when you're trading. They help you make the right decisions. Having a checklist helps assist you with directional bias and having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals, which you want to do. A checklist is a plan of action and everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action and should have a checklist no matter what you do. You've got to know what your goals are. So let's talk a little bit here about the 26 points. Why do they work? Well, the point rating system works because it is such a detailed analysis of the price action. It also works because everything that is being looked at in the, each point uses the daily chart of the stock. So the daily chart of a stock is the most powerful and real indication as to the trend in a stock for any trader of any kind. It doesn't matter if you're day, swing, core, anything. The price reading on the daily chart tells you everything you need to know about who is controlling stock and in what direction. You must get the direction right on the daily chart if you want to make money trading. You must trade with the trend and correctly read the trend in order to make money trading. You've got to do that. I, I just can't tell you enough. You know, there's people that occasionally will take a trade against what's going on in the trend, make money. In their mind, then, they remember that large amount of money they made on that day. And it, it's it's a fluke, like the day that Cisco actually rallied and was green, but it failed um, completely in the chart and continued down in the bearish direction. One time does not make a trader. You have to be able to get into the market and trade the trend all the time because that's what's going to give you the consistent days. Trading is a journey. I love having big days whenever I have them. Do I have big days every day? No. No, I don't but I chunk it out. I make money consistently. That's what you have to do if you want to do this for a career. So you play the days you get things big and they work out and you take two great trades like an OWW and all of a sudden you're up 11 Rs and boom. Then there's some days where you're chunking it out. It's about consistency, but if you're against the trend, you're never going to be consistent. You're never going to be consistent. And one big day is never going to wash out all the negative days playing against the trend. So you've got to be able to read what's going on right. And I use this checklist. The 26-point checklist tells you what to look for, tells you how to be focused on. A checklist is effective. It's effective to do what? To bank results consistently over and over and over again, and that's what you want to do. The time to learn to trade is now. It's time. A lot of people want to trade the market, but they're not sure where to start. They don't know what to do. We've well, got to learn. You've got to learn. You've got to learn from somewhere. You have to start somewhere. And why? Because this is how you're going to make money. I mean, you got to learn what to do so you can make the money. And not only that, so you can win. You want to win. It's about winning at the end of the day. You're in these positions. People are against you. You want to be the winner in the end. So learn how to read trends so you can make money in the market. And not only that, be a winner. And the great thing I love about trading, which I'm sure most of you who, who are doing it already know, is that you can do it by working from home. It's the great thing about trading is you can do it from home. It's fantastic. The fact that you can work from home uh, and make this kind of money is just great. And I'm personally, you, I love being my own boss. If you're working for somebody else and you have a boss right now, you know, sometimes it can be very, very stressful. Being your own boss is great. And when you're a trader, you're your own boss. So the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It is a complete system on how to trade. I teach how to rate the gaps, how to pick the stocks, how to take the entries, where to put the stops, and then how to read to where the targets are. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. It's an online class. I teach it online so you can be anywhere in the world, and retakes are free. So after you sign up for the class the first time, you can retake it anytime after that for free. The dates of the class are December 14th and 15th. From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, the cost is $24.99. If you're interested, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you'd like more information on the class or if you want to sign up, it's next weekend. So get on the right path to success. How do you do that? Get a strategy that enables you to be able to read directional trend because then you can take positions and feel more relaxed about the risk that you're taking in the market. The class I'm doing December 14th and 15th is the last class of the year. This is the last class of the year to learn how to trade if you want to get revved up and get ready to go to trade in 2014. It's really about a new year and a new you. How to get conviction in your trading, you got to learn it. Learn it from a mentor. 
You know, I've been able to mentor people, teaching them how to have this type of confidence level themselves and get their reads on these things right. You've got to lift your trade into a higher level. Now, people, I just can't believe the people that I talk to that have been trading on and off for years and years that just have no sense of what they're doing. It's time to do it. It's time to make money. The time to make money is now. The time to learn what to do is now. The time to be successful is now. The time to be profitable is now. If not now, when? If not now, when? Now. Now, right now. Before the new year. Before the turn of the century. Before 2020. You know, if your dream is to become a trader, then you've got to do it. It's about a new year, a new you. So get on the right path to trade successfully for 2014. Thank you everyone so much for listening to the lecture. Here's my email. If anyone has any questions, you can ask me now before we go over the market analysis. Does anyone have any questions about anything? Anything at all? Anything I talked about today? Anything about trends or gaps? Let me know. Okay, so Kathy, are you there? What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Kathy to, you are, okay. Well, actually, hang on, Kathy. I'm going to put my chart up here. I think I have time to go over the market right here now. I'm just going to take my PowerPoint off just one second. I just want to make sure you're there. And I'm going to bring up a live chart of the market. So hang on. And I'm still here, everybody. <laughs> 